So for today's um reporting po will be reporting about case studies on government to citizen and business applications in e-government. So first, what is it, government to citizen again? Um, government to citizen e-government focuses on making information accessible to citizens online. This is referred to as, citizen, as a citizen-centric e-government when governments take further steps to provide online services organized around citizen needs. So basically, um, nilalapit lang na, binibigyan lang natin ng more information and more service ang citizen through online or through um, computerized services. Kaya nga, tinatawag na e-government. So ano pa bang ibang functions ng government to citizen na e-government? So e-government can transform citizen services. It can enhance transparency of government activities, katulad nga no na-discuss last time. And of course, reduce administrative corruption. Mamaya, makikita din natin kung gano na-reduce ang bribery and corruption sa, sa um, government po ng India. Kasi um, yung case studies namin ngayon is um, based sa, sa Indian government and yung mamaya sa business um involved din yung other other countries like the Philippines and um uh, Singapore and Chile so next um it can uh, e-government can provide access to information to empower citizens it can enable their participation in government and enhance citizen economic and social opportunities so but may isang study mamaya um which uh which discusses about yung um yung sa land titles and deeds. So ay, isang isang example yun. Um of course um e-government um uh makes makes better lives for themselves and for the next generation. Yun yung aim ng e-government for the citizens. So we have for today for government to citizen applications, um, we have four case studies as well as the business government to business applications. Then we have also four studies. So first, let's go on to computerization of land records in Karnataka Bumi. So lahat po dito sa government to citizen uh, based po sa Indian government so uh, it, itong ano isang chapter siya dun sa book na na naka uh, na binigay sa atin ni ni Dean so this chapter includes nga yung four cases um different uh, which discusses about the different types of citizen based uh, e-government um so yun um the department of revenue in karnataka india has computerized 20 million records of land ownership of 6.7 million farmers in the states so yung uh, mamaya may maririnig kayo yung mga uh, talok ibig sabihin nun, um parang mga divisions of lands and parang ano siya, parang may township din siya. Basta division yun ng lands. Tapos per division kasi, meron yung ano, parang ikios. Yun yung parang, yun yun ano, uh, magiging parang way nila para ma-check yung mga, mga lands nila. Yung kung pwede silang mag-apply for, uh, yung, kunwari, uh, gusto mo gusto mo ayusin yung sa inheritance ng titles and deeds ganyan. Meron kasi sila yung uh, village accountant ganyan. So doon mo sila i i aayusin doon sa e-kiosk nila. Mamaya makikita natin kung paano yun. So ayun. So previously, the farmers had to seek out the village accountant to get a copy of the records of rights, tenancy and crops or RTC. A document needed for many tasks such as obtaining bank loans. 
So dito din ni ba sa Pilipinas um uh, to apply for a bank loan you need um syempre assets. So one of the assets is syempre yung yung ari-arian mo na na land property ganyan. So syempre kailangan mo maayos 'yun. Syempre kung hindi nakapangalan sa hindi kayo i kunwari naka naka pangalan pa sa for example sa kalolololohan mo pa. Pero syempre nasa inyo yung title. Hindi niyo pwedeng i-loan 'yun ng ikaw yung maglo-loan mismo kasi kasi Oh, sorry, <laughs> may nag-chat kasi. Sorry for the interruption. So, before may manual system, syempre. Um, so, yung steps na is to register, which indicate the current ownership of each parcel of land, its area, and proper pattern. Next is village maps that reflected the boundaries of each parcel. Request to, la- to alter land records upon sale or inheritance of a land parcel had to be filed with the village accountant. So ayun nga. So lahat ng ano um regarding sa mga land titles and deeds ganyan, um kailangan talaga uh, kakausapin ang village accountant. Kaso nga lang, ito babasahin ko, um nagkakaproblema kasi sa village accountant pero pa sa bribery. Um, landowners found it difficult to access the village accountant as his duties entail traveling. The time taken by him to provide RTCs has ranged from 3 to 30 days, depending upon the importance of the record for the farmer and the size of the bribe. So, isipin mo yun, no? Uh, para lang maayos yung isang um, titulo or yung papel, kailangan mong hintayin dumating muna yung village account, accountant Tapos hindi mo pa sure kasi 3 to 30 days nga. Depending pa kung gano'ng kalayo yung, kunwari, yung land mo, ganyan. Tapos yung, <clears throat> tapos magde-depend pa sa bribery. Yung bribery, alam naman natin lahat yung parang lagay, ganyan. Um, dito din naman sa Pilipinas, tal- talamak yun for sure. Pero sana ngayon nabawasan na. Kasi dun sa sector namin, hindi, hindi kasi halat. Hindi kasi ganun. I mean, doon sa pinag-work ko, which is yung health sector, wala kami kasing bribe bribes ganyan. So, a new approach. The first phase of computerization was completed in 2002, making a computerized land record kiosk, Bumi Center, operational in all the 200 taluks in Karnataka. So, yun nga, yung 200 Three talogs na yun, yun yung divisions ng, ng lands dun sa Karnataka. So, dun sa 203, meron, meron isang kios for each of it na pwede nila, pwedeng puntahan ng mga farmers, ganyan. Yung, yung, yung kios, um, parang, parang two screen siya, yung isa for the, for the, ano, for the customer or yung, yung landowner para ma-check niya if tama ba yung yung details na nakalagay doon sa pinapaayos niyang paper. So, kanina din discuss natin yung tungkol sa deeds, di ba? And yung inheritance, ganyan. So, yung, yung process na yun is called mutation. mutation. So, doon sa India. So kung magpapamutate ka, ayun nga kailangan mong kausapin yung village village accountant tapos tapos yun hintayin mo pa yung 30 days. Okay, next next is implementation of challenges. So syempre since nag nag nagsa start pa lang itong um I mean Nung time na ito, nag-start pa lang yung, yung implementation. Siyempre, hindi mawawala yung challenges. Kasi siyempre, bago pa lang sa kanila yung, yung system. So, meron talagang um, may mga downs din talaga. So, first is yung rollout of the application. Initially, to 177 locations was a challenge due to poor quality of manual records and the enormity of the data entry task. So, 
So kahit saan naman siguro, parang nakaka-overwhelm nga naman yung yung dami ng kailangan mong i i i um i computerize na mga documents. Especially yung mga mga land titles kasi syempre nakapart nakapartition 'yan usually. So ang daming partition, 'di ba? So tas minsan pa may problema sa sa um sizes ng lands ganyan. So kailangan mo talagang ipa-check yung mga mga details nun. So magkaka-problema talaga lalo na kung parang first phase pa lang nung nung um, pagko-computerize ng ng task. Tapos next Um, records in the field were not up to date due to poor work culture and lack of training amongst the revenue staff. So, ito naman, um, sa internal naman tong problem din. Um, Siyempre, di mo rin maiwasan na meron mga mga ka-employ um, mga empleyado na minsan tamad, ganyan. Tapos yung iba, walang training. So usual um so syempre yung efficiency tapos yung ng work workforce eh syempre mababa lalo na kung hindi naman sila dedicated dun sa work nila. Tapos um min, tapos since not up to date um means min, minsan may fault din yung ano diyan yung customer or yung farmers kasi minsan um dito din naman sa Pilipinas minsan sinasangla ganyan tapos hindi na nila nakukuha uli so yun din at fault kasi minsan sinasangla nila sa kamag-anak so parang syempre ang mindset nila since uh, kamag-anak naman yan hindi hindi ko na ayusin kasi kamag-anak naman yan eh uh, ma, parang pwedeng i, an, i siguro na iisip nila uh, pwedeng as inheritance na lang ganun. So next, um, many problems were encountered in offline data entry. The process was slow and error prone due to poor work quality by data entry agencies. So pero pa sa staff, mag, nagkaka-problem din din sa queues ganyan kasi uh, Uh, siguro noong time na to, since 2002 pa lang, syempre, hindi pa ganun ka-advance as compared to now. Tapos mag-play pa ng malaking role yung fourth challenge, which is yung interruption in electrical power in the Taloc headquarters and the delay in maintenance of computers at the Taloc level by vendors were a problem. So dito din sa Pilipinas, di ba, kapag nawawalan ng kuryente, Siyempre, nadidelay yung work. Tapos na, yung sa business side naman, um, siyempre, nalulugi yung mga mga ano mga business owners. Kasi siyempre, lalo yung mga yung mga uh, kailangan talaga ng electricity, ganyan. Siyempre, hindi sila makakapag-provide ng service nila kung walang, walang energy. So la, now let's go to the gains that the 2002 survey reported. for this case study. So first is yung is in use of the Bumi kiosk. So kanina napag-usapan natin yung mga challenge ganyan. Pero meron din yung gains nga na pa, yung may may mga um yung customers mismo um na na utilize nila yung Bumi kiosks with no help. So meaning um kahit na sarili nila uh, kahit sila lang yun nandoon um kaya nilang i uh, i gamitin yung kiosk tapos um um kasi kung mamaya may may makikita kayong comparison with regard uh, um between naman sa manual tapos yung computer system nga na makikita natin na malaki talaga yung improvement um uh, from manual to computerized na tapos sobrang baba na ng ng corruption kasi nga yung ano prone to bribe talaga kapag yung ka, ano kaliwaan di ba So next is um complexity of procedures um, most users uh, 75% ng users na gumagamit ng Bumi kiosk um nag, wala silang naging problema um 
kahit sa mga ano um, kasi yung sa mga kiosk meron din yang ano meron din yang mga staff so wala sila nagiging problema kunwari um kailangan nila i-processing ganito ganyan tatanong lang nila ng onte tapos yun na okay na hindi yung katulad dati na arami pang kinakailangan na parang ay kulang pa yung ano mo hindi hindi kanila tutulungan uh, uh, based sa ano based dito sa dito sa case study na ganun nga ang nangyayari dati sa manual na <clears throat> manual system um third is less errors in documents received so di ba kapag man, pag sa manual uh, syempre sulat ka may ganyan tapos uh, o kaya type written pa Siyempre, hindi nila may edit agad or ma i ma ma correct if ever merong problem yung paper. So, since computerized na, madali, mas madali na nilang ma-edit and ma <coughs> uh, tapos yung mga documents error free na uh, by 7 uh 74%. So, 74% mataas na yun, di ba? Lalo na 2002 pa lang ito. Next is yung cost of service. Um, all users of the Bumi facility who wish to receive a hard copy of the RTC are to pay a fee of, of 15 rupees each and receive a receipt for the same. <clears throat> Kaso nga lang, uh, meron ding downside dito. Kaso parang minsan daw hindi na nila nakukuha yung receipt. So, sabi nga ng BIR, di ba? Always ask for receipt. So, yeah. Next is hidden costs. Um, citizens also incur hidden hidden costs of time and effort to secure their certificates. Um, most BUMI users, um, 79% of the BUMI users reported a minimal waiting time in the queue of 10 minutes or less compared to the 27% who could meet the concerned officials in such short time. So, di ba? Um, mas mobilis talaga kapag digital na. Next is yung reduced corruption. Ito yung pinaka-serious issue kasi sa, sa kanila yung corruption talaga. Kahit dito naman, di ba? So, um, two-thirds of the users of the manual system paid a bribe and 66% of them reported having to do so very often. So yun yung sa manual system. So so 3% 3% na lang nung nagkaroon na ng bumi bumi system. So isipin niyo yun no ang taas ang laki ng difference nung manual system pa tapos nung computerized na. So talaga nakakalis talaga ng corruption. And then lastly is your staff behavior. While the technical capacity of the system plays an important role in its success, the approach of the people who handle these tasks of critical significance is of critical significance too. Most Bumi users, 85% of them, rated staff behavior at the Bumi cost as good. None of the users of the manual system rated the staff, beha staff behavior as good. So meaning, may maganda yung pakikitungo ng staff when nung na computerized na. Kasi syempre siguro um, hindi na nila kailangan maghanap. So maghanap ng kung ano-anong documents na nakatago sa ganito ganyan. So, hindi din sila stress. So, I guess, yun yung dahilan din kung bakit mas maliwalas na din yung behavior ng staff. So, as you can see on your screen, it, um, ito yung table ng comparison between manual and computerized. So, makikita natin sa screen is meron yung section for RTC or yung ano nga, uh, yung sa land titles and deeds, tapos yung sa mutation, yung pag sa inheritance naman. So, ay, makikita natin yung number of trips um, <clears throat> na reduce siya into 0.5, tapos yung waiting time, 4.2, elapsed time, <clears throat> 3.2, naging 2.9 na lang, 
then um error rate from 3.88 yung ano error rate nila is 2.3 tapos sa computer is 8.3 so ayun if may questions kayo um feel free to ask na lang so what are the potential future benefits of the booming system the system generates various types of reports on land ownership by size, type soil, crops, owner sex, etc. For so ito sinasabi lang basically sinasabi lang yung information um magiging useful for planning poverty alleviation programs and supplying agricultural inputs. So hindi naman lingit sa atin ka alaman na third world country din tong India. So, di ba nga, di, nitong, ano, nitong pandemic, sobrang pangit din ng, ng ano nila, ng, <clears throat> ng health system nila, katulad sa, katulad sa, sorry. <laughs> so, the system could also lead to better administration on the, uh, of the Land Reforms Act, such as enforcing a ceiling on land holdings. So what are the key lessons? Um, implementation of land records computerization has been difficult in India. The facing of implementation in terms of scope first. Um, so first is yung RTC. Then kapag na-check mo na, is then, pwede ka na mag-proceed sa mutation. Then state data center and expansion to rural areas. And finally, integration across agencies. And geographic coverage was well conceived to balance the potential benefits against the risk of implementation failure in deciding how much reform or re-engineering to tackle at any one time. So, may questions po ba dun sa first piece? No. Like, release lang kayo na. So, if wala na or later na lang, kung maisipan nyo bigla na may tanong kayo, um, pwede ko namang i-cater. I or an e answer pala. So next case is the computer aided aided registration of deeds in <coughs> in Andhra Pradesh. Yung AP is Andhra Pradesh. In yung, um, so registration of document changes in ownership and transactions involving immovable property are governed by the Indian Stamp Act of 1899. So the deeds of various kinds are required by law to be written on stamp paper of prescribed value. Certain transactions require a fixed duty. For others, the ad valorem method is used whereby the stamp duty is a percentage of the property value or loan that is the subject of the instrument. The ad valorem method ensures that inflation will not erode the value of stamp revenues. This method accounts for over 90% of the total revenue from stamp duty. So, ano nga ba yung um, steps for the registration? So, the traditional 11-step registration procedure um, prior to computerization in 1988 was complex and time consuming. So first, um, kung makikita nyo dito, 11 steps yung gagawin. So time consuming nga naman talaga kung iisipin mo. Kasi uh, tingnan, uh, isa-isahin natin, um, the value of the property was determined. So tas pupunta ka sa step 2, stamp duty, transfer duty, registration fee, and other fees was calculated. Then stamp paper pa. Tapos magastos pa. <laughs> Isa pa yun. Then the legal registration document and certificates to be enclosed with the document were prepared. Um, these documents were presented to the sub-registrar of, of the jurisdiction. The sub-registrar scrutinized the documents reviewing the valuation of the property and calculation of stamp duty, transfer duty, registration fees, and miscellaneous fees. So step seven, payment of the visit stamp duty if any is required. 
final documents was certified by citizen before the sub registrar and two witnesses. The do document was copied into re the register book. Copies were posted to two indexes by name and by property and accounts and reports. Document was returned to the citizen. So, kung makapansin nyo na binabasa ko lang ang exhausting na, <laughs> di ba? So, ayun. Um, so, ano, sino, sino ba yung involved dito sa um, conventional registration process? So, first is yung stop vendors. Um, you stop vendor, stamp vendors. Um, stamps were sold to the public through private stamp vendors. Um, um, kukuhad sila ng license um, para makapagbenta din sila. So, um, pri private individuals tong stamp vendors. So, the private stamp vendors commonly charge an illegal premium on the face value of the stamps when there was when there was scarcity of stamps of a particular denomination. They also resorted to the sale of fake stamps and post-dated stamps for an additional charge. There were about 2,300 licensed stamp vendors and 221 departmental stamp counters in AP. So, so hearing this, di ba, pa, <laughs> para sa stamp vendors pa lang sobrang ubus pera ka na din. Kasi um, parang nagkakaroon din ng um, katulad nung nag-pandemic, di ba, yung mga nagtitinda, tinasa nila yung price nila. Kasi syempre, um, pandemic, tapos syempre parang iisipin mo, ay, wala namang magagawa yun kung tatasan ko yung presyo ko, di ba. So, ayun. So, next is yung document writers. Um, the document writers were given official recognition in several states of India through a system of licensing. Through a system of licensing. In Andhra Pradesh, when a document was not written by a licensed document writer, an additional fee was levied at the time of registration. So, kailangan mo pang humanap ng document writer para lang, hindi ka madagdagan ng fee. Eh, meron ka rin kailangan bayaran sa document writer, di ba? So, document writers prepare the maps and location sketches to describe the property filled in various forms and assisted citizens in procuring certificates from various authorities. For their comprehensive service, they demanded a fee higher than that prescribed by law. So, ito, ito na naman. Siyempre, wala kang, wala kang choice. So, siyempre, tataasan niyo yung, ano, yung price niya kasi wala kang choice. Eh, illegal. Eh, illegal yun dapat, di ba? Wala naman silang magawa. So, ayun. Lastly is um, yung registration agents. Um, these are self-employed individuals and firms who, for a lump sum payment, get a document registered recovering the whole ranges of services. So, parang ito yung um, red tape dito. No? Yung parang Ano ang tawag niyo? Yung... Fixer. Uh, fixer. <laughs> Para fixer yung dating. So, ano ba yung drawback? So, lack of transparency, valuation, tedious back office functions, and difficulties in preserving documents. Um, kung may tanong kayo dito, kasi parang self-explanatory dyan. <laughs> so... Uh, a new approach, um, card implemented in 1998 was designed to eliminate the, ma the maladies affecting the conventional registration system <coughs> by introducing electronic delivery of all registration services. <coughs> so what are the key benefit, uh, key objectives of card? So first is demystify the registration process. Next is bring speed, efficiency, and consistency and reliability and improve the citizen interface substantially. So paano, natin, paano nila na-achieve na yung goal? So first is introducing a transparent system of valuation of properties easily accessible to citizens. 
Next is replacing the manual system of copying and filing of documents with a sophisticated document management system using imaging, imaging technology. And third, replacing the manual system of indexing, accounting, and reporting through the introduction of electronic document writing. So next is implementation challenges. So first, um, the National Registration Act of 1908 did not envis envis envisage the use of computers to handle registration procedures. The Registration Act therefore had to be amended, a process that took over a year. So, nung inamend to, isang, isang taon pa bago na amend. So, the Act in its application to the state of AP has amended to provide for um, first um, document registration and copying may be completed with the aid of electronic devices like computers. So, basically, nung inamend yung Act, parang... Um, para maging um, computerized yung uh, yung nakapaloob sa act na yun. So, let's go on to the second para hindi rin tayo ano. Um, second is to use these technologies effectively. A large and well-designed training program was carried out by a private sector company at a cost of 13 million rupees or 9% of the project cost. A third implementation challenge was the tremendous data backlog. The card masters or the, at the state level could be built without much difficulty as the data is both limited and readily available. However, the project encountered major challenges in building basic value data and EC data for the last 15 years. So, on your screens, um, ito yung benefits naman and costs. So, um, kita nyo yung change dito, ma sa, lalo na sa waiting time, um, 97%. Sobrang na-reduce siya. So, hindi ko na kailangan maghintay. Kasi tulad nga na kanina sinabi, sobrang exhausting na steps. Tapos yung um, proportion paying bribe, bumaba na din. Kung, kung mapapansin nyo kanina, parang halos puro bribery na din. Tapos, um, added cost pa. So, next, uh, ito naman yung sa revenue collections. So, kung mapapansin nyo, every year, tumataas yung revenue tax. Tapos, by million pa to. So, yung, yung growth din, tumataas. So, um, still another benefit of the card project was that I, it promoted the public to pressurize government for similar ch changes in other areas. The improvements made in card over the years were introduction of the Telugu or yung local language nila doon. Um, uh, meron na sila sa software nila. So kung isipin mo din sana meron din dito sa Pilipinas ng uh, I mean meron din sa Pilipinas ng ganun pero parang ang saya din kung um kung lahat parang meron eh paano papampangan depende sa kung saan ka diba parang uh, parang sa Korean <laughs> may subtitles <laughs> uh, next is citizens can now book prior appointment with the R SRO for registration in order to reduce the burden of waiting for long hours at the office. <clears throat> and third, other web-based citizen services have been introduced. So key lessons. So um, clear cl cut plan. The government should have a clear, coherent, and rational plan for choosing a particular e-government application. The Andhra Pradesh government prioritized and selected a service that generates high tax revenues, had a large citizen interface, and some prior involvement with IT. The land deeds registration service was one such area. Next is targeting concrete benefits. So in this application, IT solutions were used for the specific goal of reducing the time it took 
for citizens to register their deeds. Reducing corruption was never the stated goal of the card pro project, nor has it been eliminated to a significant degree. Any government that sets out to eliminate corruption as an explicit objective is likely to encounter greater resistance from employees who stand to lose. So, um, di dito sa section na to, um, kanina nga, di ba, nakita natin dito, um, yung sa <coughs> bribery niya, um, buha ba man, pero hindi ganun kalaki. Pero yun, yun na, sabi nila, hindi naman yun yung main, pero at least bumaba, di ba? So next is effective change management of all the factors that contributed to the success of card. This clearly emerges as the most important factor. To circumvent predictable and formidable opposition from the, in the intermediaries who stood to lose from these changes, the project did not confront them directly, but chose instead to coexist with the, the old system thereby allowing the market to eliminate gradually the demand for these intermediaries. And next is infrastructure. Um, appropriate physical telecom infrastructure is absolutely necessary for the application of IT solution, but it is an insufficient condition to achieve successful e-government reforms. Oh, uh, let's now go to the third case, which is online delivery of municipal services in Amedabab Municipal Corporation, BJ Wada, and Kalyan Dombibli. So the, the Amedabad Municipal Corporation, or AMC, provides civic service to nearly 4 million citizens residing within the urban limits of Amedabad city spanning an area of 190.84 square meters in and in addition suburbs of 150 square square kilometers sorry um with a com with a population of about 1 million people also live on the support of amc civic services so the major services offered at the civic service civic service centers are um, first is your computation and payment of property tax. The website enables self-assessment of property tax through a simple formula understandable to all, displays details of payments made in the past and of dues. Payments can be made at the civic center or online using a credit card. So next, issue of birth certificate, birth and death certificates. The database contains records of birth and deaths from the year 1981 onwards. A printed and laminated copy of the birth or death certificate can be obtained instantly for a nominal fee of 25 rupees. Third, um, issue and renewal of shop and establishment license, poker license, hotel and restaurant license, um, data pertaining to shops and establishments, hotels and restaurants is linked to the property tax database based on a unique tenement number. <clears throat> so forth, payment of motor vehicle, vehicle tax. The database is integrated with that of the Regional Transport Office or RTO, thus enabling control of tax evasion. Next is payment of impact fee to the Town Development Office or TDO for regularization of construction. Six is processing of applications made under the Right to Information or RTI Act. Um, so next is filing, tracking, and readdressing of complaints pertaining to civic amenities. Complaints pertaining to civic amenities can be filed at wards, at ward offices, civic centers, or through the website since they are all connected through an internet. So kung 
kung may tanong kayo tungkol sa internet, internet is yung sa loob lang siya. So, yung internet kasi sa labas. Parang ganun. Baka nang makakonfuse ma- kayo kasi. So, a new approach, uh, city civic centers of the AMC have been operational for more than five years. The implementation of the project started in the beginning of 2002 and the first civic center was launched at Law Garden in September 2002. Six more were started in the same year, while an additional nine were launched in the year 2004 and 5. At present, there are 24 civic centers operating across the five zones. So what are the implementation challenges? So first is the processes under the manual system were complex, non-standard across ward offices, and not well documented. Inefficiencies in the system were mainly due to the existing system of information, information management, which indirectly encouraged back, bad practices. Stakeholders of the system include citizens who could bribe employees to get their work done out of turn and in their favor, and elect councillors who support illegal activities in order to retain their popularity among citizens, thereby insure, ensuring their re-election. So, uh, pasensya may, meron din dito yan sa Pilipinas. Yung mga bribes, tapos yung mga um, favors sa mga staff and dun sa mga mga politiko. So as you can see in your screens, um, yung comparison ng civic, of civic center with the departmental system. So mataas din yung improvement, lalo na sa waiting time. Talaga ang um, kapag nag-digitalize talaga or computerize yung mga documents um, or yung services, talaga nababawasan yung yung mawe-waste mong time or magagamit na time. Pati araw. So, yung error rate, uh, nabawasan din. So, what are the costs and benefits of this case study? So, the entire initial investment for the project had been provided by the government of Gujarat, which had made a provision of 50 million rupees for e-governance during the year 2002 and 3. Um, there has been a growth of 26% in transaction volumes since the system was computerized. The automated system facilitates quicker reconciliation with, by enabling easy access to information to assess real-time demand and collection, thus reducing tax evasion and increasing the collection. The automated system facilitates quicker reconciliation by enabling easy access to information to assess real-time demand and collection, thus reducing tax evasion and increasing the collection. Um, in addition to economic to benef- the, to economic benefits realized by the AMC, Computerization has greatly enhanced the ability of the agency to comply with the citizens' charter and to provide services to citizens in an efficient and effective manner. So as you can see um, in table 9.6, the elapsed time or date varies for various, for various services. So um, computation of tasks, uh, Computation and payment of property tax from five days, naging 1.6 na lang. Then issue of birth and de- birth and death certificate from 4.7, naging 2.2 na lang. Issue and renewal of license from for shops and establishments, 8.2 to 3 na lang. Then new registration of birth, parang automatic na lang um, kasi kalahating araw na lang kung makapansin nyo. So in this Uh, ano naman, in this table, 9.7, uh, makikita natin yung transaction volumes and revenue collection from civic services, civic service centers. So, kung mapansin nyo, every year, nag increase siya by number of transactions and yung 
revenue from taxes. Maraming sila nang kukuha ng taxes. So last but not the least, um, let's go to our fourth um, case study for the government to citizen application for e in e-government, um, which is yung ESEVA, Electronic Delivery of Citizen Services in Andhra Pradesh. So citizens and businesses need to de deal with several government agencies and departments in making routine payments for utilities. Um, obtaining certificates and licenses, and for obtaining service, services. Consumers need to go to a specific office to pay the bill. Even when such counters were computerized, there are large queues on certain days of the month. So dito din naman um, yung mga services, minsan meron talaga yung days na mahaba yung pila, ganyan. So hindi rin ma uh, may iwas niya. So a new approach um, in 1999, the AP Andhra Pradesh government launched a pilot project in one location in Hyderabad, Hyderabad called the Twin Cities Network Services Project or yung tinatawag nilang twins to provide online delivery of eight services under one roof. So there are 43 E-SEVA centers with 350 service counters spread across Seconderabad and Hyderabad. Each center operates from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day and from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sundays and holidays. Grabe no haba. So let's check on kung ano yung services na binibigay ng E7. Um, so ayun, nakikita nyo. Uh, yung services nila is yung payment of electricity bills, water bill, reservation of water tanker, Payment of tax of MCH, registration of birth certificates, issues of birth certificate, registration and issue of death certificate, renewal of trade license and labor license, issue of prepaid parking tickets, payment of property tax of commercial establishments. So, you, um, yun under naman yun sa municipal services. Dito din naman parang gan Ganun lang din through the LCR or local local city register. Um uh yun, uh payment of telephone bill sila meron. Sa sila siguro um sa government siguro ang telephone bills nito. Kaya dito sila nag dito kasi sa atin di ba lahat privatized. So seal of passport application filing of passport application through the RPO. CTD um, under this is filing of A1, A2, A9, returns of AP. Basically, puro parang saan, <laughs> puro sa Indian government. Um, specific. So let's go to the evolution of e over four years. So ESEVA has evolved in many ways since its implementation. Services from government departments and private services providers have been added to increase transactions, transaction volume. Service centers have been added to enhance convenience and increase volumes. The number of monthly transactions in ESEVA centers in Hyderabad has grown steadily to reach 1.8 million in monthly transactions in July 2006. Aggregate data for transactions in 2004 indicates the following breakup for major utilities. Um, so 51% for electricity bills, 6.8% for water bills, and 7.2% BSNL so internet. Uh, next, um, E7 now provides many alternate channels to which citizens can access E7 services. So first, the number of E7 centers was gradually expanded from 8 to the current level of 43. So antas na ng increase, no? So in, in a recent de development, E7 counters have also been established in private and state-run banks where a limited complement of e services can be available. So 
the banks find it attractive to host ESEVA counters because every citizen who comes for ESEVA services is a potential bank customer. Um, Natry niyo na bang magpa, uh, magpa national ID? Um, ngayon, dito sa national ID system namin, dito sa municipality of Kimba, uh, parang kaka-partner nila ang land bank. So, uh, lahat ng mga mga pumunta doon na na uh, na gimban yan. Uh, ino offer nila ng free uh, ano free application di ba? Mayroong free application sa land bank kapag nagpa uh, ID national ID ka. So parang ganun lang din yung gist nitong um attractiveness ng pag-host ng banks for ESEVA counters. So besides ESEVA centers, citizens can directly access ESEVA services through the Andhra Pradesh online portal that has been created with the help of another private sector partner. So that ends my my report po. Next is uh, uh may questions po ba kayo? Okay, thank you very much for your uh, comprehensive discussions uh, about the, your uh, presented case studies. No? Uh, that is way back 2002, no? pero hopefully no, uh, in the Philippines we will be able to adapt. Uh, nakikita naman natin siguro yung effort ng DICT. No? Yes, oh, yes, And at the same time, uh, ngayon kasi ang uso yung smart city no? sa bawat ano. And uh, I don't know if you are also familiar with uh, yung ginagawa ng NICP. I am familiar with NICP, no? yung organization, na mayroong mga awarding ng mga bawat uh, town. No? Parang uh, ano bang mga award? Nag-judge nag na ako minsan eh. No? Buong Pilipinas yun. Parang ang Manila, nanalo sila ng second runner-up. May mga ganun about sa mga e-governance. No? So I think especially majority of uh, us is now working with I know uh, in the government agencies now. So wala na tayong pwedeng gawin kung hindi talaga i-adapt yung technology, no? So andiyan na tayo, medyo palalim pa nga ng palalim medyo. And at the same time, we are so lucky naman na yung government natin talaga is pursuing no to give a Sabi nga natin yung past services no, na pwede nilang ma-provide. No? Uh, in some agencies, yes, andyan na. Pero talaga may agency pa na siguro naiiwan. No? Medyo naiiwan pa this time. No? So, pero hopefully, no, uh, 2002 na mag end na yung turn ni President Duterte. We are looking forward na sana makontinue kung ano yung umpisahan. <coughs> Honestly, no, I am not a Duterte fan. No? Pero... Imagine, pag pupunta ako ng Batangas galing ng Bulacan, ang bilis na yung travel ko sa taas, yung sa Skyway na grabe, dire-diretso ano na ang baba ko, Laguna na from uh, Bulacan, buka, uh, from NLEX. No? So yung mga ganong infrastructure ba? May balang Oo, oo, Di ba sobrang laki ng tulong? So, syempre, matagal pinagplanuhan yan, maraming discussion ang ginawa yan, but still, uh, ang advantage, andyan na siya. No? So again, sinasabi ko nga, lahat ng local government may initiative naman na para maging smart city. So, I hopefully, na, for example, if you are working with uh, PhilHealth, SS and everything, I think lahat naman nandiyan na yung application ng e-government. Pero yung uh, success rate, yun na lang siguro ang kailangan natin i-focus. Na? Okay, so thank you very much, madam. O, next presenter po. Doc, may tanong ako. May bayad na ba ngayon yung Skyway? <laughs> <laughs> Oo, mag start na siya ano. Kailan ba nabasa ko kanina? Ka bukas Monday ata ang start na ba? Do mahal 200 plus simula sa NLEX. Pero malaking kagaanan kasi. 
Pag yung bandang may Quezon Avenue ba yon yung basta may ano, grabe yung para ko nasa other country, yung na, grabe, na-appreciate ko na para ay nasa ba ako, ay nasa Japan ba ako, nasa Taiwan ba ako kasi ang ganda talaga. Ang no? bandang center point po. <laughs> yung pataas, yung pataas na sa sarap. Eh kung parang nasa other country ako, nararamdaman ko ganun. Maganda, maganda nga doon doc, nag-picture ay pinipicture ang ko yun doon eh kasi parang Wow, ganito pala sa taas. <laughs> Oo. Ang ganda ng ano, parang wow, hindi ganito sa baba. Ang ganda ng picture ng ko yon, ano binidyo ko yon, binidyo ko yon. Ah, tapos yung nakikita niyo naman ang going yung infrastructure na papuntang north, no? So nakakatuwa. Yes, Kunti-kunti yes, yes. niya siya. Ano nga yung construction ngayon, sir, sa papuntang Bulacan, di ba? Ya yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah. nakita ko yon. Kasi pag umuwi ako ng from Kainta, mamaya uwi ako after ng class ng panghapon. Minsan doon ako dinadaan ni Waze eh, sa taas tapos diretso lang pababa na ano. Tapos dumadaan na siya sa May Marilao sa may bahay ni Mrs. na Mrs. ko. Doon ang banda eh, ang ginagawa. Tapos Bukawe eh, kasi taga Santa Maria ko eh. Ginadaanan ko siya. Mm-hmm. Eh ongoing nakakatawa na. Traffic din sir sa ano eh sa Santa Maria. <laughs> ginagawa kasi ng banda dito sa may bandang ano no. Ano ba to may kawayan yung NLEX nagka-traffic yan ngayon. Kaya doon kami idinadaan sa kung saan sa ang loob ng Taiwan ko. <laughs> Sumusunod na ako kay Luis. <laughs> okay. Yan yung Luis is also sa technology na na-apply natin. Okay? So next presenter please, meron pa ba? Meron pa. Meron meron pa. Ah sige po, share na po ang screen. Si Sir Jerome. Jerome. Ilan pa ang presenter pagkatapos Sir Jerome? Isa na lang, dalawa pa. Isa na lang po, Dok. Okay, sige, madama pa. Haba na share pa ng screen. Last last term nyo ba ngayon or pangalawang sem nyo pa lang? Pangalawang sem nyo. Dok, may tatlo pong last term. May, kami pong mas marami po. Uh, second term na po namin. Ah, okay. Yung last term, sasabay ba kayo sa magkukumpre ng August 6 and 7? Yes, yes po, Dok. Ah, sige, ko- coordinate na lang kayo sa akin, ha, para sa process, ha? Okay po, Dok. Thank you. Mabawasan na kami ng tatlo. <laughs> ah, sige, sir. Case study about application e-government. Go ahead po. Morning. 